Hey everyone, welcome back to But Why Though the Podcast, the podcast where me, Adrienne, and Matt talk about the things in pop culture that people say matter and ask the question, but why though? Before we get started, I wanted to make sure to let you all know how you can support us. The first thing, rate, review, and subscribe us on iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere you can. It helps people find us and it helps get the word around. Also, follow us on all of our social media on Twitter at ButWhyThoughPC and Facebook, facebook.com slash ButWhyThoughPC. And we're now Twitch affiliates. So at twitch.tv slash ButWhyThoughPC, you can find us streaming anything from Overwatch to podcast editing to possibly some movie nights coming along. Go ahead and drop us a follow and that would be awesome. We also have a sub button with a nice spicy emote. And if you want to support us a little bit more, check out our Patreon patreon.com slash but why though pc so thanks for listening and thank you for all your support enjoy the show repeat this in very loud words spoiler review of Avengers Infinity War I'm saying that because this is a movie that you should watch as clean as you can just because it's a great it's so great I'm your host Kate I'm here with Adrian hey how's it going and Matt hello and yeah guys so Infinity War came out on April 27th we all saw it the first screenings in our relative cities um, 18 movies in 10 years. Holy crap. And it felt like it. I don't know, like, what were y'all's, like, first thoughts leaving the theater? Um, are there any showings available so I can go back and watch it again? <laughs> so I'm gonna say this right now. Unfortunately, I knew pretty much majority of what happened in all the, I guess, main spoilers of this movie before it happened. Because it was ruined from events previous few days. So some of the stuff, it was kind of like I was just waiting for it. Yeah, if you watched our Twitch channel, we Matt and I were doing a Marvel Ultimate Alliance event, getting ready for Infinity War, and we were kind of harassed by trolls for like two days straight. And Matt was super Matt over here and made sure that people in our Discord weren't, weren't spoiled. So he took that big bullet. He took that big moon to the face. That's, do you wonder why people don't always volunteer to be mods? That yeah. is something that part, and talking to other people who have been mods, that is something you have to accept, yeah. whether it's movies, games, or anything else. But anyways, moving on. On the bright side, we're big enough to have somebody harass us. Sure. <laughs> Out. So outside of having it ruined for you and you were expecting it, like, was that what you were thinking of when you left? Uh, not really. I mean, I was, I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm obviously, I'm obviously not the person that likes to go watch the movie four times in a row. I, I've argued on this podcast, I don't understand it, because that's a lot of money. <laughs> like, if anything, you work on your memory before you start just spending hundreds of dollars to watch the same movie over and over. Are you attacking Adrian right now? No, Adrian only saw it like twice, and he has a movie pass. Some of these people literally <laughs> see the yeah. thing like five times already. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it that many times. I don't have enough time in the day to go watch this movie five times. Like, I want to <laughs> see it maybe three or four times over its span of being in the movie for three or four months, but... Yeah. No, there's people that like I've seen people like going, I've seen this movie twelve times now and I hadn't even hit D V D and I'm like I'm over here counting in my head like, Oh my gosh, I could so like pay my money. rent with this money. <clears throat> Especially movie ticket prices. But anyways, no, um I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great movie. It definitely set up and obviously I knew it was we all if you didn't know it was a part one, you obviously missed something. I but, you didn't know, and if you didn't know it was a piece of a franchise, you also obviously well, missed yeah. something. Well, yeah, so I was like, I, I kind of knew what was happening and whatnot. So I figured, yeah. Yeah, my so my first reaction was I was crying a lot throughout the entire thing and also crying as I left, um, repeating over and over a line um, from one of the characters at the very end. Uh, we had a spoiler chat 
um, set up in our Discord to talk about it, so I immediately went there to just post, like, GIFs of, like, me crying. Um, so that was my reaction. It was amazing. Um, and I think with Adrian, like, I feel like I, I, I want to see it at least three or four more times, like, in theaters, like, with that experience, just because I feel like each time I watch this movie, like, a different layer is going to get peeled back. Um, that's something I'm really excited for. Yeah. Um, like, this, that is, like, legit the most fun I've had in a movie since uh, The Force Awakens. Like, I haven't had that much fun watching a movie in a long, long time, like, where I was just blown away, like, every single second of the movie. Um, I think a lot of that's to do with, you know, it being 10 years long, waiting forever for this to come. Um, but I think also a lot of it has to do for, like, um, unlike Matt and Kate, I didn't have anything spoiled. Like, I didn't even watch any of the trailers for this movie. So I can, like, tell what was in the trailer based on, like, my odd, like the theater's reaction to stuff, like some of the jokes and stuff. Like, uh, I guess when Spider-Man was like, oh, we're using our fake names, I guess that was in the trailer. That, yes. that, line, killed, that line killed me. In the theater, and I was laughing my ass off. I thought it was hilarious, but I don't know. I think a lot of like it just everything just kind of came together, and it was a great movie experience for me. And yeah, it it was great, a lot of fun. I did like. Obviously, they didn't go as long, but I was glad they didn't decide to do this. Like, we have to have a two hour or under movie. Oh Um, yeah, because this is what I believe it's two and a half hours. Two hours and thirty five minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like. Not quite three hours, but at least it was like we got we got more of an adventure feel. Just give me Lord of the Rings, damn it! Give me that length. Give me I, a I, did cut Lord of the Rings. I like was upset when they. <laughs> yeah, I was upset when they were handing out tickets at Alamo Draft House. I was like, you take those damn tickets back. <laughs> we're not almost done. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> and in a good way too. Um, I, so I do want to say, Adrian, from like your tra- your trailer point, I think Marvel like obviously like keep not watching marvel movie trailers like you do you but i think what they've done is they've actually put thought into hiding big reveals by shooting other trailer sequences or shots for the trailer well I mean, um i think that's just a fancy word for lying yes like they just lie to you in the trailer yes. which i think would upset me even more like oh. like i saw like this like the only thing i saw from anything leading up to this movie was like the still of everybody running in wakanda with hulk in there yeah but i saw hulk get bitch slapped in the first like two seconds of the movie so like i was like yes. that's never gonna that happen was, yeah that and was then shot like for it. <laughs> yeah and then like the, in and obviously captain america holding thanos's hand which only had two stones in it which obviously wasn't the case. Like, so I don't, I, I don't think that's clever. I just think that's lying. That's like Star Wars level of like, I'm just gonna put this in the trailer and then not show it to you, well, like, and make you expect it all movie. So for me, I watched those trailers multiple, multiple times, um, and it got me hyped every single time. Um, and the fa- I, I guess too, like, I don't know. It just doesn't like. It is definitely lying. They're like they did it with Thor. Like they showed his scene with when he had both eyes and things like that. And like here, they showed Thor with only one eye. And a lot of the shots and like Rocket gives gives him a found eye <laughs> um, because he's Rocket and he steals body parts. Um, but like, I really liked it because like I don't know. I don't have the willpower you have, Adrian. I'm gonna watch every trailer ten times. So, like, I'm totally going to be like, oh, shit, they didn't do that? That's awesome. Yeah. But Can that's I be honest personally. with you? Like, during during the trailers for Infinity War, I was like, god damn it. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Why am I doing this to myself? But after this movie, I'm like, I'm so glad I did it. I'm so <laughs> glad. So you can just like, be like me. I don't watch. I watch the trailers one time. Yeah, I just, like. I give myself one time, and then I don't watch anything again. I think the really thing that, like, really kind of reinforced my thing is that they showed... We we went to go watch it a second time in the um, the theater down the street from us because there was, like, the only theater that had openings. But they showed, um, I guess, like, the latest Jurassic World trailer that gives you, like, the subplot of the movie. And it's, like, it gives you, like, the whole movie if you've watched, like, two trailers. And I just hate that so much. Like, stop giving me subplots of your movie. Now I know that there's a subplot of Jurassic World, and not, it's not just them saving dinosaurs anymore. I don't, I've seen dumb. Jurassic. I've seen that trailer like four times, and I don't know what subplot you're talking about. Also, I love how everybody keeps saying Jurassic World when it's Jurassic Kingdom, oh, but everybody yeah. just knows Fallen it. Kingdom. It's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It's still Jurassic it, World. Yeah. It's just Jurassic World Part Two. Yeah, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. 
It's like saying Jurassic Park 3 is not Jurassic Park. It's Jurassic. It like, wasn't Jurassic Lost Park. World. Lost World. Did that you is- see that movie? It was not Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> that was a disgrace. And I was actually more hyped for that one than I was Lost World. So, I mean, fun fact about Matt. Matt owns one DVD of a movie, and it's Jurassic Park. So, there you go, fans. <laughs> actually, owned it on VHS Big Bang for Theory uh, on oh, DVD. Yeah, all ten seasons. It's our Christmas gifts. Also true. <laughs> Oopsies. Ipso facto, I enjoyed the movie because I didn't watch trailers and I'm super excited for it. And yeah. I'm never watching another trailer ever again. Okay, let's keep it off the trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Move forward. Let's move forward. I'm glad, okay. I'm glad we so, on trailers for 25 minutes. <laughs> so, that's how big this movie is. It's going to be a four hour episode. Um, no, it's not because I, I have to edit that and that's a lot to do. So, um, we're not going to do that. Um, but yeah, not so my Avengers, problem. <laughs> Avengers Infinity War. Uh, it was directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. They gave us the Winter Soldier and, or Captain America Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War, arguably the two best, two of the best movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I think they knocked this out of the park, obviously, from what we all just said. I just want to say it is fascinating that two brothers were able to do this. Not just yeah. like that they were able to do it together, but the fact that they've made it both at the same stature of in the same thing to be able to do something like this. Oh, like come together as a package deal? We'll either come together as a package deal or even make it as directors in general at the same yeah. level. Because most time you have, you know, one, two brothers don't actually do that or sisters, but usually even if they do, usually one's very, very good and the other one's yeah. like, eh. So like they kind of like, they, they kind of follow the same trajectory as the, Wachow- uh, the Wachowski siblings. Like all the stuff they've done, they've done together. Right. So they've been able to like do that. But yeah, I don't think I can name another sibling other than the Wachowskis. Yeah, because usually there's at least a different, definitely either in skill level or directing ability yeah. and how how are they do it. Yeah, I can't name name a better duo to be honest. Yeah. Um. So and it was, uh, one of the cool things is if you notice in the movie, a lot of the music is tied to where the people like where the different characters have come from in their solo movies, but then also heavy tone of the original Avengers soundtrack, and that is because they brought back um Alan Silvestri. Um, to do the score for this movie, which for me gave me so many feels. Um, no, yeah, music is solid for sure. Like, yeah, like the thing, the one that jumps out to the most to me is when you know Cap talking about going to Wakanda and the drums kick in. It just yes, it just works it's so such a well. Good oh, the transitions in this movie, like with the music, is perfectly. Even like when they go from. Um, you know, the Avengers over to the Guardians of the Galaxy and they kind of, like, change the music there. The music in this, the score of this movie is, is so, so good to blend all those movies together and it not seem, like, forced or over the top. Like, so good. It's a feat. It's just, it, it's, I don't know what can replicate this. Um, anyway, so we're going to get away from fan, from fan, from fan people in here. Um, let's talk numbers to prove why what we're saying, like, kind of, like, back up a little bit of what we're, what we're doing. In, and you mentioned The Force Awakens. It smashed every record that was held. So these are there's an asterisk next to these numbers because these are the projected numbers and basically the numbers that are not completely official yet due to the time that we are recording this. But these are most likely in the ballpark range or pretty close or what they have now. So we're recording Sunday night. Um, it's 9.30. There's probably like three more Avengers showing at every theater across the U.S. Um and so domestic it's made 250 million foreign 380 million without china and so worldwide it's sitting at 630 million dollars opening weekend yeah that four day is going to be huge yeah huge huge four day i can't wait to see that number like this is insane yeah, like I thought I, I didn't know if it would get close to Avatar. Like I wasn't even like optimistic about it. I thought that it would beat out The Force Awakens um, just because of like kind of the event cuz this is kind of like the event that The Force Awakens was, yeah. you know, on, like, on a bigger scale. But I think I don't know. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets pretty goddamn close to to Avatar. I think it's going to be based on two things. One, whether they do like what they did with the first Avengers and Avatar and do a re-release in the late summer. Yeah. To end of the or into the fall, like they did it basically like a going back to school or before back to school event, like they did with those two movies. I think if they do that, it has a chance possibly. But if not, I don't know. Just looking at the numbers, I, I Avatar is so much farther ahead than every other movie. 
It's was insane. there like a um, is there like a timeline of like where you know I'm sure there's one out there of like where Avatar was over its over its run, so I can like follow it. Um, I only ask you because you're because your numbers guy Matt. And... <laughs> Let's head to Box Office well, Mojo, who should be sponsoring this podcast, and find out. Well, I was like, I've done this uh, before. I've looked, I've looked at all these damn things. I haven't memorized. But one, I don't know if there is a timeline per se of when it came out. The the two things that I want to find interesting that Avatar and even Titanic did that I find very fascinating compared to like a lot of the newer movies that are like smashing box offices right now is their run at number one. They own the two longest runs at number one straight, or overall. Like, I think it's 15 and 16 weeks, respectively. Black Panther, for as much money as made, was out of the number one spot within, like, seven weeks, I believe. So, it still wasn't even close. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. It, I'm yeah. also wondering what the churn is, though. I feel like we put out a crap ton more movies now. Yeah, but this is, remember, yeah. Avatar was 2009. They were still putting out quite a bit of movies in. I, I just think we it's been... I feel like there's less Ten movies years. now because of these big movies. Well, like I think there's more big movies. Like, yeah, we have that's Deadpool, what I mean. Yeah, like yeah, we have Deadpool and it. Solo coming out. Yeah. In like within the month. Yeah, and like those are going to be huge box office. Not huge box office, but they're going to take they're going to take money away from. Yeah, the overall. Plus, I'm saying you have with those two. So also, it opening see. weekend it made seventy seven million. Um, Wait, what? In Avatar, domestic, <laughs> but that's unadjusted. <laughs> yeah. And also, was the re-release the 3D release, or was it 3D release when it first That I'm not 100% released? sure on. That would be interesting, because that might be why it had it for so long. But also, the other, well, I mean, they did do a re-release on the thing. Yeah. Avengers has a re-release, too. People yeah. like to bag, rag on Avatar about this. Avengers has one as well. One of the things that I want to point out, too, just like looking at the Avatar numbers, it made $2 billion foreign. Yes. All that was made foreign. It only oh, made $760 million in the U.S., but the thing of the matter, like we talk about, is guess what? Foreign people matter. Well, no, they come do. Come on, China. <laughs> come on, China. No, I'm, I'm totally no, I'm totally saying that they do. Like just like we talk about with all the movies that we talk about, like the foreign box office definitely does. Matter. I do not like using domestic numbers, but, honestly. No, no, I think using worldwide makes the most sense because um, that's how like movies like Resident Evil go into like Resident Evil Six because like the foreign market's just like. Making it a lot of money. Come on, man! You, you, you're talking to the Fast and the Furious lover. Over here. <laughs> uh, I love foreign markets. <laughs> so like, we, there has to be some way your franchise does all alive. I, like all I know is, in one weekend, it's already hitting the domestic number, and China it hasn't released in China, and it's already sitting at 380 million for the first weekend. Foreign. It's so not hitting the domestic number. It's, it's only almost hitting the domestic number. That's worldwide, though. It's actually not. Cl- it's still not halfway to the domestic number uh, right now. Yeah. Domestic's only $250 million. Okay, No, it's going to smash that. I'm not saying it yeah, won't. Yeah, it's going to smash it. We'll, like, we'll come back. We'll do a reassess. So, But it, either way, it's The exciting. main thing I have to say about the come Avatar on, thing that people just, don't just realize. Just be honest. The main we, thing we about just hate James Cameron right now, right? Yes. Is that, is that what it is? We just want it to be because James Cameron <laughs> sucks right he now? He just needs to stop talking. Shut up and make a movie. Just, uh... But, no, the main thing that people don't realize is how far Avatar is ahead. It's $600 million. Like, right here... Just what Infinity War is made right now, that's how much it's ahead of the second close movie right now. Yeah. We'll see. So basically, you need to take this opening weekend, yeah. and then you have to have an entire whole other run, and then yeah. add that. Yeah. I, I, I kind of want to lean in Adrian's camp, where I think if something was going to be, or at least like get to Avatar, it's going to be Avengers. I'm not saying it doesn't have a chance, but this is probably your best bet. I just want people to realize how much farther Avatar is in front of everything else. And yet he still hasn't made a sequel in 10 years. It's almost, I mean, it's over half a billion ahead of everybody else. I know. And that's, <laughs> that's why what's I, so amazing. That's also why I don't understand why he hasn't made a sequel yet. But, he doesn't okay, have let's to. Stop, let's, let's stop talking about, well, he does, because apparently he's mapped out five movies up until 2025. Yeah, okay. But superhero oh, movies are I the know, problem. I, know, I, know. I wonder if so, he'll explain his characters or if he'll just assume that everyone has watched uh, four <laughs> movies before that. <laughs> Now let's go into the ratings from people. <laughs> um, it is sitting at a 9.1 at IMDb. This is the weirdest thing. It is sitting at a 68% on Metacritic, an 84 critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, but a 93 audience score. Um, no, the main thing that bo- that's weird about this is a 9.1 on IMDb. I do not understand this rating that system. I don't either. All I know is that I have read multiple reviews where they are mad that they didn't explain the characters in the movie. 
Yeah, I don't get it at all, really. Um, I don't. I, I don't think we should like spend too much time on this, other than just saying like it's just kind of dumb, just because like this is a different kind of movie than because comic book movies are terrible at doing this, like right? Like they do this kind of stuff all the time where they don't explain their characters, but none of them had have had eighteen movies lead up to it, like X Men Apocalypse, like they do it. Don't explain background characters, like that's a problem. Uh, Justice League, they just throw characters in there. That's a problem. But, like, you had 18 movies to learn these characters. They didn't give you anybody new other than Thanos in this movie. So, like, what are you so upset about? And Thanos, they it, give him, like, a great backstory. Yeah, and like, and the one that they did give you, you got a great backstory from them. Like, it, like why did you go see this movie if... Because, first of all, like, I feel like these people know these characters. They're just talking out the ass just to get some <laughs> views or some reads on their, their website. Is all I feel like... Feel like so i know that's the main hot take about what not having the backstory but my still my favorite review that i saw was that was rotten was the guy would have put wait was a guy maybe a woman now i have to remember exactly it was a person it was a person obviously i don't know if it was a person honestly reading that but anyways they literally go the movie was never boring it was visually compelling it was it made them wanting lots more of the movie and it made them sad it was awful What? <laughs> <laughs> that is still my all-time favorite review. Reading all the weird one, I get the whole backstory thing is ridiculous, but that is still my best one that I've seen. I also had one that said that it was too emotional, and that it kept yanking you around with different emotions the entire time. It's like, did you not want a movie to do that to you? The second favorite one was they said these movies have rep- too much repetitive violence. What? <laughs> what? Huh? What and then, of course, the they're all the ones. You mean Thanos <laughs> smacking people around? That's what we came here for, y'all. <laughs> we came here to watch Thanos kick ass and take names or take ass. Those are my two kick, favorite reviews. I get all the other ones and how ridiculous they are, but those are my two favorite ones because those are the most confusing to me. Yeah, the other one, uh, the other like thing is too is like serious film critics are like, this is this is a culmination of showing how movie film has been ruined and comic book movies are a death to the genre and like go watch a movie that 10 people are going to watch and give it 10 awards and circle jerk yourself i don't care <laughs> i hate comic book yeah art the, thing, the thing like that that is just bad about that critique is that like nothing has ever done this before yeah and no one can replicate it like literally no one can replicate it dc can't replicate it star wars is trying to be you know I mean, Star Wars isn't going to be able to do it with all of their stuff, I don't think, with all the movies that they're coming out with. I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to have like the same cohesion that um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is having. So I don't know like, how it's destroying a genre if like they're the only ones who can do it well. Yeah. But anyway, so enough of that. Yeah. We've got the ratings. Let's go to the movie. So, there's like 20 plus leads here. <laughs> Just to start off. Like... Every single main character and close supporting characters in a comic book movie is in this movie. Or in an MCU movie is in this movie. Um, which is insane to think about. Like, that's a lot of money. Um, their budget was 300 to $400 million, which is actually typical, like, blockbuster budget. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, it just doesn't have uh, Paul Rudd and What's-His-Face. It, mm. it's, it's, it's the only people you don't have. Yeah. yeah. Even though they advertise Paul Rudd on the posters, I don't know why you didn't give it to me in the movie, but well, whatever. Well, so what I'm actually... Besides the point, I guess. So, well, what I'm thinking, actually, is that, well, they don't advertise him in the final posters. They advertise him in the Comic-Con release posters. And so I looked this up, and it looks like of like both of, like both Avengers 3 and 4 were being shot and then divvied up. Uh, from what it looks okay, like. yeah, that because makes sense. If you look at a lot of the clo- like the set pictures that they have of Hawkeye on set of Avengers, it's not actually here. Same thing with some of the stills of Cap in his Avengers One uniform with um, RDJ and Paul Rudd. Um, and so a lot of it is the thinking that they shot it longer so that they could have people all there, and then they cut it into two movies. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I yeah. guess. Like, obviously, like, they're still working on Avengers 4, but, like, it's coming out in a year, which means that they have to have that almost completely done. Can we just talk about how awesome that is? What? 
Like that's like we're gonna get the next one in a year. Oh, like I'm not I know. gonna have to. It makes me so I'm happy. not gonna have to wait. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm really excited. So can we actually get to the actual yes, movie? Yes, yes, the now movie, that the we're movie. like it. Okay. Sorry, the movie. Um, it opens directly after Thor Ragnarok's uh, closing scene with the giant ship, and you realize, oh crap! All the Asgardians, half the Asgardians, <clears throat> half the Asgardians. Are dead because I'm ready they, to hurt some Thanos people right only now. kills half of people. I'm ready to hurt some people right now. Thanos only kills half the people. You're just um, salty because Korg and Valkyrie are dead. Don't forget Meek. And Meek. Um, that is not confirmed. Thank you. During my, sec- during my second viewing, I scoured that first scene. We see no Korg, we see no Meek, we see no Valkyrie, so... They're dead. Not technically and, dead. And you see that like Heimdall could have easily had been torting people out before he was attacked. Where are they going? To the broken Asgard? He didn't know where the fuck he was sending. Like, he just sent fucking... Oh, he, he, oh, you tell me he didn't know where he was sending no, him? He, he sent, sent him, him right to the him. Doctor Strange house. All that matters I just, is... <laughs> I just feel like like Korg and Thanos would like bro out, and I don't think Thanos would kill Korg. <laughs> I feel like Korg would just be like, hey man, it's a, that's a nice gauntlet you have. And like you would let him live. At first, like, I'm not gonna like lie. Thanos would kill Korg. At, fu- at first, I thought his uh, actual the first the main lackey with the giant axe was Korg for a second. I thought he betrayed. Him. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> I would have loved the heel turn. Actually, I would have been there for it. But funny, to Aaron. say this, they kill anybody that betrays and re- willingly fights them. And if you're telling me either Valkyrie and them did not fight, oh, Valkyrie or they're dead. Fought for or they were sure. sent away on a Bifrost. To where? Anywhere, Matt. The ship is anywhere. Blown up. It's the fucking cosmos. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I mean, Thor there survives in space. Worlds. So, like, even if she got like shot into space, like she could technically survive. And Korg's exactly. a big rock monster. Yeah. Meek, I feel like Meek's probably dead. I don't think we're gonna see the more Meek. <laughs> but we might get Korg. I don't know. I'm, I'm hopeful. Yeah, that is true. Like Thor did prove that Earth's guardians can survive in space. So yeah, like, like multiple times during the movie. No, not short. No, he, short amount of time he got. He held by open like the thing. Star. Like, yeah, like. <laughs> I think he's good. Anyway. She's um, dead. Shut up, Matt. <laughs> um, I was, this is like where Infinity War drew my first tears. Um, and I cried really bad when I saw Idris Elba on the floor. I was like, Heimdall, no. Heimdall can't die. Yeah, I was more sad that Heimdall died than Loki died. Well, I want Loki to stay dead. I want Loki to actually have a death that matters. Yeah, his death is pretty good. Yeah. Um, because... Loki pulls his, I'm the god of mischief, Thanos, I'm here for you. And then he, well, first he kind of, like, betrays him and says, we have a Hulk, which I, like, this is, like, the start of, like, oh, my God, they're going to reference their entire universe in this movie. Yeah. Because that is exactly what, what uh, Tony says to Loki. And he says that, would you like to describe the big dudes fighting, Adrian? I know you love big things fighting. Yo, Thor, uh, the Hulk got worked, son. Like... <laughs> Whole, he got beat so bad he didn't want to come out the rest of the movie. Like, I know we're we're gonna give Peter Quill like shit like later in this in this review, but the Hulk went out like a punk and didn't come out the rest of the movie because he got smacked so bad by Thanos. Like, that's how that's how bad the dude got worked. He got outboxed. Oh, it was just disgusting, and I loved it. From, that's like, why I was disappointed. I was him. like, Heimdall saved him. I was like, he wasn't worth saving after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got worked. Yeah. He was crying when he got punched in the shoulder. He's like, uh, and then he got just smacked in the ground, like the rock style. Oh, so good. There's this part where Thanos like rams Hulk into his knee, and I was like, oh shit. No, yeah, no, he is like legit boxing him, yeah. like ducking out of the way, hitting me in the kidneys. It was dope. I oh, think so dope. for the most part, I think this just sets up the movie on how well because they do lead with the Hulk, as basically as they always say, the Hulk is like their OP character. And he basically beats him in four minutes. Yeah. And I think yeah, that sets they, up, like, the whole entire scene. Of yeah, the theme. There's no you, you hope see, in this movie. You see Hulk get smacked up and Loke and Thor getting dragged by his skull. Like, I did not expect it to get into the movie that fast. I'll be completely honest. Like, my pizza had just got there. I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to scarf this down. There's going to be at least ten minutes of, like, story building. No. No. You, you don't get it. You're, we start off and everybody's dead. Yeah, no bathroom breaks in this movie. No, I we I had to go like an hour in, and I held it. I held it. I was not missing anything. But like, so um, Loki's love, for, like, I really liked Loki here 
because it showed that like Loki didn't just abandon that bond that he had built with Thor and Ragnarok, which you've seen happen in frick in, in Dark World and stuff like that. And you have Thanos just holding Thor's head and Loki like essentially giving over um the the space stone or I guess they're gems now or they they gems or stones. They're stones, right? The yeah. gems in the comic, stones in the MCU. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they call yeah, okay. stones. Okay, um, giving over the space stone to Thanos in order to save Loki, or in order in order to save Thor, because he's the worst brother ever. I know he's such a terrible brother. Um, and then he gives you his whole Loki speech. You know, I'm the god of mischief. I can help you. I can show you around Earth. And then when he's about to like pledge his fealty. They do this really close-up shot where they show him materialize his blade, and then they go directly to Thor's face, and Thor's face is like, oh my god, no, brother, don't do that. And then he attempts to attack Thanos. Thanos grabs him by the neck, and he's dead! And I cried so hard. So I think the part that you left out, which was the nod to it, is when he said, son of Odin. Yeah. That was kind of the nod. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Especially right. after him saying, like, I'm not Asgardian. Yeah. First of all, yeah. I went, yeah. What does he say? The, the, the Shundle sign us on this again, brother. And I was like, oh, oh, he's dead. He's yeah. dead. He's getting. He's going to die. He's going to die. Yeah, that was like the first moment of my mouth as being agape for yeah. many times during the movie. Yeah, the, it, it, it hit the ground running extremely hard. Um, so then... I guess, like, the next thing, because this is what gets set up next in the movie, like, uh, Matt, these are two of your favorite characters. Uh, Tony and Strange meet each other. One, I'm glad everybody wants to hop on the Doctor Strange bus that I've been driving for over a year now. <laughs> I guess I can slow down and let y'all hop on. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, dude. Like, he just seems like the same dude he was in Doctor Strange, and he's not any more interesting to me now than he was at the other part of the movie. Like... I think him and Tony just have a really good dynamic together because those are the two characters I was most excited to see on screen. Like, I just think people are just hopping on the train. I think you're right, man. I'm not hopping on the Doctor Strange train. I think I'm just like, those are just the best actors and you put them in a room together. That's what you're going to get. I've also argued that as well. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Also, uh, Doctor Strange calls Tony a douchebag. It worked really well. It didn't even feel comedic. Like, I was like, oh, they're really really arguing here. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you want to do you want to take their dynamic a little bit? I mean, as far, I think one, if we're going to just talk about Doctor Strange, he definitely embodies uh, better Dick Cumberbatch for the, especially from the first Cumber movie. Cumberbatch, whatever. I you don't said care. Cumberdick. No, I didn't. Cumberbatch. <laughs> okay, his name is now Benedict. <laughs> Benedict from the first movie on basically finally embodies all of what Doctor Strange has been, as they basically call him a wizard the whole time. <laughs> Which, I want to know if he ad libbed that. I don't know. I just feel like he finally embodies his character to the perfect role. I thought he was amazing in this movie. Yeah. I obviously love the first movie and been saying this for a while. Except all, for Dormammu. If we, I'm telling you, if we just cut that movie, like all of a sudden, like somebody happened to like scratch that last part of the DVD where you don't get that last part and it just ends on a cliffhanger, you're like, this is an amazing movie. <laughs> we never know what happens. And then we'll start Doctor Strange 2 from that moment. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> which by the way, Doctor Strange two is actually has an eighty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. You mean which Doctor is, Strange one? Whatever. <laughs> Doctor Strange one. Now, see, now the problem we have this whole point is going into twos, threes, fours, phase two. Now six. we've been in that problem. Well, no, because we introduced to a lot of the new characters that we know of either not that are now getting all of their solo movies and moving into their gotcha. second movies. But Doctor Strange one has an eighty nine on Rotten Tomatoes, which is actually higher than this movie, believe it or not. But as far as their dynamic, I thought it was great with them too going. I also so just to take some Twitter words, Tony and Space Tony was something I didn't know that I needed and would work so well. The fact that it took you this long to know that you needed it, I'm very disappointed in you. Well no, like I so like my whole thing, like I no, I'm I, disappointed that you did not know this. Fine, be disappointed in me, I don't care. I did love Doctor Strange and I love Benedict Cumberbatch, but I was a little worried, like, there isn't a lot of like transition in Strange's character in the first movie. Like he is kind of like the person he was when he started. Which is fine. Like I like that character. Um and I think you're right, Adrian, he is still the same person in Infinity War. But he's an accomplished version of that. 
like I think you said it in the text, like he's he's not he's no longer a doctor of medicine, he's a doctor of magic. Like, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he embodies yeah. the wizard, like he he has a purpose and a meaning embedded in his powers and, you know, magic and stuff. So that makes it like that much more important. And so when you see him talking with Tony and he's like, I will sacrifice you and the kid. I have to protect this stone and I have to protect the universe. That's my job. He also embodies what I do love about his character is the long game. Yeah. There's no short sightedness in anything he does. I feel like he just played Sherlock as Doctor Strange. Yeah, but he can see 14 million possibilities. Of course he's going to play the long game. Yep. <laughs> well, as we get to the other characters, we clearly know some of them can't play past two-minute game. Also true. I would also like <laughs> to say, uh, Doctor Strange, I think, is the first time that they've shown a character from the most recent phases be that strong. Yes. Because usually they're kind of nerfed a little bit compared to like the phase one and phase two characters. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, he's just goddamn Infinity Stone. He better be broken. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I gotta bring in Peter. Peter Parker, Spider Man. My boy. My boy Pete. My so, boy Tom. First thing I wanna say is I thought the Iron Spider suit looked ugly as all hell in those toys, and I hate the color scheme. But in action, holy crap, that looked good. Yo, the introduction to it, so good. Yeah. People clapping in my theater. Like, I hate people clapping and, and stuff. I hate it. But, like, I was all right with the clapping in this movie. Because there was moments like that, like, where he's falling off and the suit just takes him. And it's pretty good. I'm, I'm all right with it. So, side note that you cut out. One, Adrian, when you move back, I don't know how we're all going to go to the movies. Because Kate does not shut up from going, <gasps> and, like, crying. Oh, and, like, yeah, no. I can't watch movies with Kate. Sorry. Well, I sit on the end. And it doesn't matter, and I still have me. to look at you, and I had the terrible thing. No, I didn't lead I, with we, that in the movies. If I can't watch these movies with Kate, because the whole time she's, for our listener, Yeah, for our <laughs> listeners, we go to the Alamo Draft House, where you're not supposed to, like, talk or make noise in the movie theater, which I love. She it. doesn't That's why talk, I love she just makes noises. I would, I would order card your ass so fast if I sat next to you. They're not loud. Matt can only hear me because he's so right next to me. So you ruined my experience. I don't care, Matt. <laughs> Why'd you not enjoy the movie, Matt? Because all I heard... I, I, I feel like I would just like feel like the angry Matt looking during the movie from like my top row seats. No, Matt got mad at me because of the end credit stuff that I was doing. But like we'll get to that later. <laughs> Anyways, um, back to what yeah, I was saying. Spider suit, good. I like it. So it one, really well. I still don't like the Iron Spider suit. I still don't like the concept of Iron Sp- Spider I will say it was allowed only because, one, it's still an ugly design to me, but it's okay at least for this rendition because they were in space the whole time. Yeah. He was necessary. He had to survive. Yes. I, that's why I'm like, <laughs> I will allow it because it was in space. Um, the, and so, like, how they get there is essentially the giant, like, arc ship um, that Ebony Maw, um, which is one of Thanos' children, brings down to steal the Time Stone from Strange, which is, like, a pretty cool fight scene. We see Wong for a little bit. I want more of Wong. Wong did. Wong said I'm going home. Peace. He was smart. (laughs) I want more of him. Um, But uh, Peter's on the bus. He sees it happening. We see the debut of the Spidey Sense, which, Adrian, that was in the trailers. Um, Oh, I know. That wasn't (laughs) in the trailer for me. Oh, my God. I was so hyped. I was like, babe, babe, they just confirmed it. That's the first we've seen of it. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't saying this, but, like, in my mind, this is what yeah. I'm saying in Which, my mind. Because I don't talk. If, if you remember our Homecoming review, um, that was one of the things that Matt didn't like, was that he didn't have a Spidey sense. Now he does. Um, and he essentially goes off into action, helps out Strange and, and Stark, and as he jumps, he, um, yeah, essentially Stark tells him, don't let them take the wizard. And so he just says, well... Ebony Maw now has the wizard in this spaceship. I'm just going to jump on this spaceship. I don't know what I can do. <laughs> Best thing also that's not mentioned so much is as much as Doctor Strange is great, his how about cape. his cape? His cape is amazing. Yeah, that should get like its own credit. <laughs> <laughs> like whoever animates the cape should get like a credit like in the main uh, main credit role. Yeah, because his I think what is it? His cape like slips off of him and like takes him out and like flies around with him for a little. Cape while. was MVP yeah. of the first twenty minutes of this movie. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> Decent magic death blanket. <laughs> um, 
So then you have Stark do his whole, like, initiate whatever Friday, which gets the suit up to Peter, which you realize is actually the Iron Spider suit is all about intuition. So it's, like, kind of integrated into him, his spidey sense, and so the reason it it unleashes the iron legs as well as, you know, saves him <laughs> when he's on the, um, the ship and he stays there and goes to Titan with Strange and Stark is because of how it's integrated into, who, like, his body. So that was really cool. Which does that mean we're going into nanotechnology? Stark's going to nanotechnology because if we let's let's talk about some Tony Stark here. He put his arc reactor back in his chest, <laughs> which which uh, Pepper seemed very mad about, and it holds nanotechnology, which goes into the Bleeding Edge armor. With which the Bleeding Edge armor in the comics is phenomenal. Um, I don't like the way it looks in the movie though. I actually really liked the way it looked. I liked it. As liked soon it. as he touched his chest and it came out, I was like, oh, I love snap. the new technology. Oh, it was good. I'm all about it. It was uh, OP, Especially because, like, later in the movie, like, it, it pays off so well, like, later in the movie, which we'll get to. But, like, I thought the suit design was great. Because, like, every, every you know, movie we've had something new. And, like, he's, we're, we're getting, we were getting to the point where we had to do something, like, a lot bigger from, you know, Age of Ultron. So I'm glad, I'm glad they went right to the nanotech. Yep. For those of you who don't know, nanotech is the future. You will be eating nanobites soon to save you. I'm not laughing. I know it's true. <laughs> I- I've seen those same curiosity documentaries. Um, so into the next stage, we're going to... I'm going to move us over to the Mind Stone to talk a little bit about Vision and Scarlet Witch. Because they made her great... She uses her powers, and they're great powers, finally. Um, and Vision and Scarlet Witch are together, just like they are in the comics. Um, although it kind of, I did not realize Paul Bettany was that old. Really? He's pretty old. They're all old. I know, but like Scarlet Witch isn't. That was like my only hangup. Um, they let Paul Bettany be Paul Bettany, and um, Scarlet Witch. Um, defend him off from um i know proxima midnight's the main like the female like child of thanos that's there i don't know the other dude's name i just think proxima is really really cool um she fights them off and as they're about to lose best entrance of the entire movie bearded cap walking out from the shadows being all bearded and glorious (laughs) um and Falcon, uh, Black Widow, and Cap come and save them. And Black Black Widow can fuck some people up. Right? Oh, <laughs> so man. Good. Oh, man. She, when she did like that cedar, cedar kick in the air, I was like, yes. oh, snap. It was so good. They just good. step up her badassness. And then she has like the baton thing. Oh, so good. It was so, so New good. haircut. She's not wearing a wig this time. Well, I hate her eyebrows, though. She has blonde eyebrows, and I don't like that. As long as it's not that wig from Iron Man 2, it's, I'm, I'm all right with it. Well, anything's better than Iron Man 2 wig. Thor 1 eyebrows are better than Iron Man 2 yeah. wig. I, I guess like now that we've like mentioned all of the, the sons of uh, sons slash daughter of yeah. Thanos, uh, what do y'all think about like We have not actually their... mentioned any of them. I mentioned, yeah, mentioned Ebony Maw and Maxima, or Proxima Midnight. But, like, I mean, we mentioned the big guy being Hulk, so I think we've covered That's all four of them. Uh, there's another one. The like Chitari oh, looking oh, dude okay, with the scepter. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. That guy. I was thinking. I thought, I thought you were talking about the two daughters, Gamora and Nebula. We hadn't mentioned. Oh, them. that's no, what. No, I, that's no. what I thought oh, you were going. No, with. No, I was no, like, no, we no, haven't no, got no, there. No, no. We do need to speed it up. We're at forty-five minutes, and we definitely have to get past okay. like the first thirty minutes of the movie. Well, I mean, I'm just talking about like for like character design. I think that I just just I just want to say like from character design, I thought that those designs were great, and like they actually had some character to them like you could actually see that they weren't just like random henchmen like ebony maw kind of like had his own character i don't know what you said the chicks i don't know what the chick's name was but she was dope i like her a lot her design is dope yeah those horns horns yeah the horns are so good i immediately look at stefani and was like you need to do that (laughs) immediately (laughs) i don't care if no one recognizes you that one looks dope (laughs) um yeah they kick, they kick, they kick their ass. 
like they they hand him their ass and they have like this really cool interaction where like black widow d- says um, we don't want to kill you, but we will. And it's crazy because Cap can right next to her. Like, Cap will kill somebody. Um, but, and then Proxima, like, says to her, you know, you're, you'll, you'll never get the chance again. Um, and that's when you, like, realize how, how big those stakes are. Well, she said you should have because you'll never get the chance yeah, again. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, so that's where the Mind Stone is. And then when you get into the other stones, you have Thor meeting the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I wasn't sure was a combo that would work. Because I thought it was like gonna, it's like gonna be too much fun, because of like how Thor was in Ragnarok. Sorry, but it worked. It worked so well because he's a pirate angel and he had his rabbit and tree. Yeah, it worked really well. I think just because Thor had just gone through all that grief and stuff, so he's not like, you know, happy go lucky Thor. He's like mourning Thor, but the Guardians of the Galaxy are just so fun, and Drax is just so. F- serious fun that I think it all just comes together yeah. really well. I think I still a... think Drax is one of my favorite characters of the whole <laughs> series. And can we talk about like how emotional like Chris Hemsworth was? Like and it was like a different type of emotion too because like, he was very matter of fact like oh all my people are dead. Yeah well, mother dead. If you, uh, What I'm trying to get to say was I think he's in this hilarious it's like funny but it's hilarious as in grief like, depression. Dark comedy? Yes. Yeah. Which why I think it works so well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I know you said before, Kate, that you were not a really big fan of Thor, but I think like over these movies, and I'm I'm not a big fan of like Thor one or two. Um, Thor Ragnarok was like the first one where I, where I actually like really cared about Thor, but I think we've gotten a whole bunch of progression from him, and I think it all pays off here in this movie, like just all around. I stand him now. Thor is probably one of my favorite Avengers. It's like Thor and Cap. Yeah. No, I think and, he and Gamora is not an Avenger yet, but Thor Cap, like, <laughs> well. I do like Thor in this movie. I think he's great in this movie. And I know, I honestly feel they finally, between the parts of Ragnarok and in this movie, at least to me, they finally show how OP he really is. So I guess we should just stop going in like chronological order and just talk about the damn characters. Talk about the OP Well, I thought you were Thor. just going on him as we saw him. Yeah. So, like, well, I guess let's just wrap up to Stormbreaker Thor. Because Thor gets Stormbreaker, which, if you don't know, is Beta Ray Bill's um, hammer slash axe. Um, and he has something similar. It's like, like Yarnbjorn. It's like an axe thing. So they give him Yarnbjorn or Stormbreaker here in the movie, which goes to what Matt was saying about like actually showing him differently because like he's really, really cool. Do you want to talk about that entrance that he has? That is, uh, it's probably better than Bearded Cap. Yeah, I, thought, I, I like. I didn't want to like take away from your you know thing, but I was like, that was the entrance that my theater like went nuts for i think the only thing would have made it bitter if they, if they would have put the immigrant song in there but i think that would have been like i was hoping for that i'm not gonna lie i was hoping for that i think so it would have been much. a little much but i would have still loved it no i was but, hoping yeah. for that so much and that was a little disappointment when it didn't play yeah like groot uh rocket and thor are a great trio really really great it's angel pirate rabbit and tree yeah he called him rabbit all movie. And I think, like, when anyone else has called him, like, a raccoon or a rat, like, or Rocket's corrected him. Yeah, like, and Rocket just never corrects him. I think he's just too, uh, I think he's just too in love with Thor to, to correct him. I think there's also a moment feels, that... He uh, feels too safe. I think also he kind of noticed, especially during, as we talked about that speech, where that Thor is just kind of a broken right now. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the best the best thing for that. He's like, I can't. Yeah. I'm just letting him call me a rabbit. This man has yeah. nothing. Because that speech yeah. is actually really good by him. Yeah. Or a little whatever spill. Yeah, because he talks. Because he has like this entire thing where he's like, well, he he just fought you, and and you he won. Well, he hasn't fought me twice. <laughs> yeah. With tears in his eyes. I don't know why it just works. It works so well. Like God, Chris Hemsworth. I love People you. People are dead. Everyone's dead. My mom's dead. My dad's dead. My best friend got stabbed in front of me and dead. I don't even have yeah, a home I love, anymore. I mean, I just like that the, it brings the, the, the development over from Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, where, like, Rocket has, like, realized, like, it, like this is more of his family now. Yeah. And when he has that moment of, like, oh, shit, now I have to go be the captain now. And, like, he goes over there to talk to Thor, even though he really doesn't want to, just because he knows that th- that's what Thor needs. I think that's something that's very, very subtle. But I think works really well having the development from Guardians of the Galaxy transfer over to this movie, like, 
perfectly, in my opinion. Because Rocket was my favorite part of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, so it's good to see, like, them continuing his arc of just being, you know, not an ass, like an overly abundant asshole anymore. Yeah. Thor ends off taking off with Rob- with Rabbit and Tree, um, teenage Groot who's playing Defenders the entire time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you end up having Drax, Mantis, Gamora, and Peter, or Star-Lord, left at one to go and head to the Collector's ship to retrieve the other Infinity Stone. And oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Before we get away from, from Tree, Thor, and Rabbit, can we talk real quick about Peter Dinklage being a giant dwarf? Oh, yeah. He's a giant dwarf. Was that in the trailer at all? No, like, that was no, not at all. I did not even know Peter Dinklage was in this movie. Yes, that is oh, also true. Oh, my God, did my theater lose it, it when he awesome. showed up. So good. Okay, sorry. I, I, it just deserves a mention because it worked really, really well. No, it was amazing, it. and it definitely one of the first shocks to me that, well, well, as far as I knew, it was not, like, at all. Yeah, and that's... Good, good. I'm glad they, they covered that one up real well. Yeah, and, and he's and he's the dwarf that makes his, his new Stormbreaker while Thor holds open a fucking dead star. <laughs> yes. Because that's a thing. Um, It'll kill you. Or you're going to die. No, if it doesn't kill me, <laughs> that's, that's what, what killing you means. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, this is where, like, Gamora kind of steals the show for me when it comes to, like, outside, like, I think when it comes to building depth from their previous characters, because I think Thor got a lot of depth in the last movie, and Gamora's kind of gotten the short end of the stick of being like just the strong the strong female character like she kicks ass which is awesome and i love her for that but like you don't get a lot of the the moments of her building relationships out beyond that point like she's usually defined by other characters and here you really get to see her backstory because she explains who thanos is what thanos does and you get to learn like he slaughtered half her people in front of her and then took her like it's really deep and you realize how much of a child she was and how much she trusted him and you get like you get to see this build up when they go to the collector ship to save um the reality yes yeah to save the reality stone um she pretty she thinks she's killed thanos when she attacks him and it turns out not being him and and she's like crying on the floor because of how much it hurt. And this is after she told Peter, like, if Thanos gets me, you have to kill me. Um, and Thanos ends up materializing again and holding, like, holding her. And you have, like, this really, like, big moment that I think solidifies, like, Star-Lord's and Gamora's relationship where, like, Peter is, like, cry. There's so many tears in this movie <laughs> um, where Peter is, like, crying Try, because he has to make the decision to like honor what she said and shoot her and kill her so that Thanos doesn't take her and he does it and the reality stone just like makes it all null and void because it doesn't matter yeah what's Thanos' obsession with bubbles in this movie I don't know it's really interesting <laughs> <laughs> so many bubbles the only thing I was sad about this is I do like the collector's storyline and I'm assuming that he's dead yeah, it seems kind of pointless to pull in the Grand Master and Sakaar if you don't actually have a Collector to be there with him. Yeah, because I was like, they had the Collector thing, and then they had literally, we saw the Grand Master next, and I was like, ooh, so that mean we're getting this storyline soon? And now he's dead. I think that just shows how much, like, Thanos does not give a shit about anybody or anything. Well, I know Thanos than... didn't, but I was disappointed because <laughs> I do like that storyline. She said, fuck your shows... expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's how the Russos felt. Like, they kind of threw... They, they did enough of, like, comic book, like, leaning stuff. Like, that was pretty spot on, but did so much different that it was, like... It was, like, a new movie. And I read Infinity Gauntlet, like, like twice. Um, so, uh, yeah. And he ends up taking Gamora. Um, and, you know, the guard, rest of the Guardians find their way to Titan. And they meet um, Tony and um tony and strange and so what Peter. titan is this it's not the real fucking planet titan matt or the moon matt are we sure yes okay 
It is in another part of the universe. I'm not the only person that said that. I had this discussion before. People asked me, so isn't Titan a Saturn moon? And it's like, yes. It threw I, me off, too. That's what I thought you were asking. I was like, I'm pretty sure that we would have seen if <laughs> his dead it's planet. Not. <laughs> it's not. It is an entirely different Titan. I mean, Thanos is called the Mad Titan because Titan has Titans on it. Okay. Anyway. Not the moon, Matt. Um, Thanos could be living on Titan right Matt. now in the liquid of methane. Oh, my God, no. Anyway. Um, takes him to Titan, uh, and I just want to, like, real quick, just kind of hit on the point of Thanos and Gamora and Nebula, because, like, Thanos ends up having, so, at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Gamora, like, or, uh, Nebula shoots off to go find Thanos and go kill him, and he ends up capturing her, and they do this really cool camera thing where they have it lined up at front, and it just looks like she's suspended in air, and then as it turns to the side, you realize that Thanos has, like, pulled different pieces of her, pieces of her body apart. And is like torturing her, and I was like, "Oh awesome. shit!" There's... Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it was an Scene amazing sure. shot. And then like you end up seeing this like connection between Thanos and Gamora, where she's lying to him about knowing the whereabouts of the Soul Stone, and he says, um, "You know, you're the most. I think it's like you're the deadliest woman in the galaxy because I taught you." And you're this because I taught you. But I didn't teach you to lie or you'd be better at it. And she ends up... I was actually surprised she did not give it up. And she was going to let oh, Nebula Oh, that's right, because they, they show the, the eye. Yeah. Where she tells Nebula, don't worry, I have the soul stone, he can't get it. Or I have the map, he can't get it. Yeah, no, she it. actually was going to let her die, which actually that's I thought right. was cool. yeah. Scratch that. Yeah, super cool scene. I really, really liked it. I like that she was going to let her sister die for the soul stone. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's like, this is like our first um, showing of like how dope Josh Brolin is as Thor. Like, what? Thanos? uh, Yeah, it's (laughs) Thanos. Like, how dope he is, like, delivering his lines and just showing, like, I don't know, it just feels like he's really there. It's awesome. Because when he's telling her, like, those lines of, like, you know, you know, you're bad. You're a bad liar because I didn't teach you. I was like, oh man, he is he is going in on in on this. So I just like that because she demanded that Peter kill her, and then yeah. the fact that she was willing to kill her sister, have her sister die, just yeah. to know because it, it would have been bad if you're demanding Peter to kill you, but you're not willing to even do your yeah. own. No, you you right, you right. I think what it was is Nebula like. Nebula, in my head, I have, like, this giant sister arc for when Nebula... Because in the comics, Nebula ends up taking the Infinite Gauntlet from Thanos. And I like, yeah, things like that. Was that really necessary? What? In this spot, yes. What? Why? We don't need to be telling people what part About comic are. books that have been out for years? They may not have seen the first 18 movies. <laughs> and, and I doubt that they're going to do that in the movie. I'd be disappointed if they did that in the movie, to be honest. Honestly, yeah. I don't know. But... Yeah, no, going, I don't we'll want to. Um, so anyway, um, he ends up going to the Soul Stone area. And the reason I'm doing this is because, like, for me, like, Gamora is amazing in this movie. And I feel like I know her now. So, um, they end up at the top where the Soul Stone is. And you actually find out that Red Skull was zapped to this planet when he was sucked into the Tesseract in Captain America first avenger and red skull has just been sitting there waiting for people to come and so he guides him up to the top he tells thanos um you have to give out up what you love most to get the soul stone and fucking jeff bridges starts crying and gamora is like who jeff bridges this whole oh, time wait, sorry josh Brolin. you said jeff bridges yeah, like three Charles times Brolin. i, have, I was Brolin. like yeah. jeff bridges in this movie you said jeff bridges like three times said you bridges. said it when he like jeff bridges need hulk to the head and i was just like i'm so confused oh, sorry, right josh now josh brolin whoopsies whatever thanos <laughs> thanos starts crying and gamora like takes the moment to like have like this triumphant like oh you're crying because you realize that you've lost you've given up everything you have nothing that you love and then all of a sudden it clicks and red, red school let her click huh red school goes i don't think he's crying about that he's crying for you yeah and then he hurls gamora off cliff and i cried really hard um and i'm really like 
say it right now, like, one of the things that has kind of, like, really frustrated me, like, looking at, like, a lot of people talking about Gamora, like, on, you know, obvious, like, Twitter discourse, whatever, it really bugs me because people are saying, oh, she was weak in this movie, she, the, the tears were too much, they fridged her, and it's like, they didn't do any of that. Like, for the first time in a movie, Gamora had so much. She had fight scenes. It showed that she was capable. She's the do- she's the favorite daughter of Thanos, and he would not love something that was weak. And she was emotional, had depth, and, like, was a complete character. And, like, it was yeah. amazing. I don't, I don't know how she's weak. She, like, legit thought that she had, that she had him beat. Like, yeah. she was delivering her, you know, exposition of, like, you idiot. Yeah. And then she gets grabbed and thrown off a cliff by what is he at this point? Is he still two stone? Yeah, like yeah. still like two stone Thanos like. No, he's three stone Thanos. Oh, cuz he has reality. Yeah, he's yeah. three stone. Yeah, so he's three stone th- uh, three stone Thanos. Like where does she get she's supposed to not get thrown off the cliff in that emotional moment there? Yeah. And then specifically her crying. Like I've seen three different instances of people saying her crying like Gamora wouldn't cry. It's like shut up. Everybody Thanos cried. Thanos cries, uh, Peter Quill cries, Tony cries, Thor cries, Thor cries like Spider-Man everyone cries. cries in this movie. Rocket cries, like everyone cries in this movie. Like, don't f- put it as just because she's crying, she's weak. Like, yeah. Then if, if by that logic, everyone in this movie is weak. Exactly. And for me, I'm just kind of like, like a strong woman or a strong female character shouldn't just be one thing. They can be all these other things and still be strong. And so for me, like Gamora kind of like is my favorite piece. Um, Somebody else start talking because I've been talking for a while and go through the rest of the characters. Well, give us something to go on. Uh, Wakanda. Pick up in Wakanda. So we. Or what's next? From the Soul Stone. Yeah. Uh, they That'd go be Titan. Wakanda next because. No, I think it's Wakanda next because they. Um, oh, that's when they arrive at Wakanda. It's not he's yeah. not yeah. back because he goes. To, it goes to they arrive at Wakanda and then they go to Titan. Yeah, I mean, we can always talk about Titan first and then Wakanda, since that's where the last fight is. Yeah, that's So fine. Titan and Thanos and then okay. Wakanda yeah. to end it? Okay. Yeah, because I don't know if he said it, but, like, they outsmart the, the Maw, or Squidward, <laughs> as he's referred to in the movie. Yes. Which yeah. has led to many a great meme. Thank you, Internet, for that. <laughs> um, and they throw him out of the spaceship alien style, which I thought is great, continuing the joke that Peter, uh, he doesn't want any is, eggs in him. Yeah, he's one. Of, he's a young kid and only knows old movie references. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, but then they crash on Titan because Titan's automatically programmed to go there. But then they run into the Guardians of the Galaxy, and you have them fighting each other. And one of my favorite moments of the movie ensues of like them trying to figure out who is working for who, and he's like, you know, where is Gamora? I'll do you one better. Who is Gamora? And then Drax, being the amazing Drax that Drax is, I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? <laughs> yeah, it's great. And they all blast you, and when he's like, I'll blast your guy if you blast my guy. He's like, do it. I can take it. And was like, no. No, you can't. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's just there's more interactions that I thought like I would never see or work on screen, but they all just work really well together. Especially the Peter Quill Tony stuff, because you know both of them are gonna want to be like the guy who comes up with the plan, which I think is. I hate Peter Quill so much in this movie. Not for Inter- like not because he was bad, just because like he was true to. Just because he's Peter Quill, like yes, yeah, he's just Peter you. Quill. Thank you. Yeah, he's just very true to character. He's just kind of like. Um, a dick like you, you get it from the beginning when he's like you can't take that pod and he's yeah. like making his voice deeper <laughs> to compete voice with deeper to, mimic him? <laughs> to keep you with Thor <laughs> and he's like he's copying me um what I think is and you just like have like Doctor Strange just on the sidelines be like these guys are idiots pretty like, much these guys are he's literally just idiots. sitting on the sidelines the entire time running the different scenarios yeah. in his head yeah literal idiots um what happens after that, Matt? There's so much stuff happens in this movie. Just, and I'm not used to leading stuff. Yeah, just do the whole Titan scene. Uh, he goes to the Time Stone. Dr. Strange says, "There's I saw 14 million ones, and there's only one way we actually succeed from this. Then he gives him a plan. I'm like, okay, cool, let's do this. Uh, Thanos shows up on Titan. He said, hey, we killed your wacky. He said, well, technically mm-hmm. he did, but he did his job because you're here. And then they fight it out. 
And then they're just about their little plan almost works, which leads to very good scenes between a mixture of powers between all the characters. That's like the best fight of the movie, because it's the yes. most cohesive use of a powers. Yes. Like, he uses his little ring spinner thingy to make little discs for uh, Star-Lord to jump on, and it's so cool. Yeah, and he lets uh, Spider-Man run through portals, and he's, uh, magic kick! <laughs> yeah, magic punch! And all the while, like, Thanos is still, like, pimp-slapping people left and right. He literally throws a moon! Oh, is that after, That's... like, the whole... That's at the very end, but yeah. Well, that's technically the end part of the battle. They yeah, kind of go back battle. to Wakanda yeah. to show yeah. that battle, but it is during place the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have him, like, locked down, and, you know, Mantis is on top of his head, and they're trying to rip off the Infinity Gauntlet, and Mantis is, you know, doing her Mantis thing of going through the movie. Quick note. Did you notice, like, when Mantis is, like, crawling around, she's, like, having her hands folded? It was weird. I didn't like it. She's like an actual Prey Mantis. That's how actual Prey Mantis is, like fight and stuff so and it blew only... me away the second time i saw it uh, but mantis is like telling everyone that like he's in a lot of pain because of gamora and then peter quill comes and basically can't not punch thanos in the face for two seconds and knocks mantis off from basically controlling thanos and thanos gets his glove back and just pimp slaps everyone around he almost had the glove off yeah. So the thing I did notice, and maybe I'm wrong since you watched it twice, but I do notice during this entire scene, which is I find do interesting, is Doctor Strange does nothing. Well, in the second time I watched it, I was thinking the same thing, but he is he does have like his little lasso ropes holding Thanos down. Well, I know he has that, but besides- but I don't know like how much that is you know him just cause I know I know what you're trying to get at like is he just letting him punch him in the face because like that's like the timeline that works or well because the reason I say that because besides the lassos he does not use the time stone at all during this entire time right now yeah yeah, yeah. so like the theory is that he just like lets it all happen because he knows that that's, that's especially like, when the, the way it ends because that's so. what he says at the end he says that it had to happen this way yeah and especially looking yeah, at so. that it looked like especially with him in the back like oh I played my part of my role and even though I know what can happen, because you can't tell me at that point he can't get Peter out of there. Yeah. Out of everything yeah. he's shown in this movie. Yeah, exactly. Which, um, is this when Iron Man gets stabbed? No. No. Well, I mean, it's still on Titan. It's on Titan, but no. So then it leads to basically Peter screws it up per character flaw of he can't hold himself. Basically, he gets up, gets mad, and he throws a moon at Iron Man. Which he does in the comics, and I'm so happy they did it here. I just thought it was legit. Yes. I haven't read the, the Infinity Gauntlet co- the comic in a long time, so I like wanted to go back and read it, reread it, but now I'm going to go do it again. But like when it happened, I was like, oh my god, he just threw a moon at these people. And then I like it too. He just threw because, a like, moon. Uh, Tony later says, if you ever throw another moon at me again. I'm like, yeah, I'm yes. going to lose it. Yeah, I love it. Which... I love <clears> it. The reason I like the scene, though, for the most part, is because, obviously, the coherentness of all this stuff. Because you don't, at least to me, I guess we'll get to Wakanda a little more, you don't see a lot of that whole, like, working together, per se, in Wakanda. That yeah. you do, especially the way they do here with combining powers. Yeah. No, yeah, you're definitely right. Um, yeah, because it, it's all, like, it all seems planned out. Like, you know, from Peter Quill throwing the bomb on Thanos' back to, like, throwing the bird and going through the, Boom. you know, Doctor Strange's you know, riff thing, it all works out. But then when everyone gets, you know, hit by the the moon, Iron Man's over there trying to take out the king, basically, with his nanotechnology, and gets Which dead. we finally get to see, I guess, in this movie, if we go into Spider-Man, like, because we take away all the Peterness of this movie, and we get mainly Spider-Man of him, like, actually moving in between saving people reaction in the webs of just moving through. Yeah. Even if he can't remember people's names. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I think like Spider Man actually does a really great job in this scene. Of it being looks Spider-Man. Yeah, of being actual Spider Man in this whole entire Titan scene of yeah. like how we design, not just the other stuff. But anyway, so then we go from basically that to then we have lead to basically as we said, the one on one if you want to call it a fight between Thanos and Iron Man. <laughs> Yo, that's the closest fight we get all movie. I don't care what done y'all say. <laughs> I mean like, he did better I mean, than the Hulk, so Thor I mean, is the closest fight we get all movie. <laughs> Well, Thor just threw an axe at him. Like, that's not really a fight. That's like Thanos, like, in his moment of triumph, and then... No, that's called pretty much winning. And Thanos Thanos sneaks... Did he? Does he really win, though? No, because so, he should have Does he really <laughs> He should have aimed for the head. If you're going to take a swing at the... At least Iron Man went for his face. 
and drew some blood. Well, all I know is Iron Man. Oh. And, Thanos, and all Iron Man isn't a goddamn god either. Billions so. of nanobites to draw a scratch of blood. Which it looks super cool because like the bleeding edge armor was falling apart in different pieces and he would have to shift it to where Thanos was hitting next. Yeah, like he, sh- he, yeah, he shifted it off of his leg. Yeah. Yeah. It was really I thought cool. the fight scene was great. I'm um, you, nanotechnology is amazing. I know some podcasts have a problem with the CGI in that scene, but I thought the CGI in that scene was phenomenal. I was enthralled with it both times I watched it of just, you know, Tony's fast thinking, just being totally overcome by just how dope and badass four stone Thanos is and just like how unbeatable he basically is at that point in the movie. Yeah. Unless you're Thor. Yes. Which then leads to, as you were pointing out, our start crying of Tony getting stabbed. I cried yeah, I so thought he was hard. done. I thought he was done for sure. It hurt. I thought he was done. It hurt. And at this point too, like I didn't know what was, cause I only saw like half, maybe actually like, maybe like a third to half the spoilers that Matt did from that person in our chats. Um, and so I was like, oh my God, were they wrong? Oh my God. And I was very scared. Yeah. I thought they were just gonna let him go out on a shield and that was going to kind of like be his death, but it doesn't because Dr. Strange gives up the time stone to Thanos, um, in exchange for sparing Tony's life because Thanos pulls out the gauntlet like he's about to blast Tony into like a new dimension, basically. Uh, but then Peter Quill comes and starts shooting at Thanos, and Thanos kind of just dips out with his. Space uh, I don't know what to go. Space stone. I was gonna call it a boom tube. I know it's like a boom tube, but it's like the yeah, space, space stone, stone. tube. It's, it's a tele- tube. It's, it's a portal. Boom tube. Just a portal. Um, yeah, portal. It's not a sky beam, so I'm all right with it. And then he teleports to Wakanda to go, basically rip, uh, rip the stone out of Vision's face. <laughs> so as we're at this point, basically. We have a battle ensuing on Wakanda as the other people went down to then find Vision as they're trying to remove his stone. And so their whole goal is War of the Rings style, which I remember why I love War of the Rings so much, is big scale battles of everybody yeah. running in. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to say who they are that are all there? <laughs> so all of Wakanda and basically Black Widow and... Captain America and all of his gang versus basically all of the dogs. Yeah, they have like these <laughs> weird, like, chitar- different colored Jatari things that are yeah. like, have like six arms. Like six, yeah, six it's arms. Dope. It's crazy. I mean, can I be honest here? Like, I know, like, why, you know, the Winter Soldier, he loves his, you know, machine gun thing. But, like, they couldn't give that dude a fancy Wakandan, like, <laughs> yeah. machine gun. All I can say is, I was Rabbit like, why? wanted like, that gun, and so I'm yeah, assuming Rabbit it was a good gun. gun. I was like, but if Rabbit, I mean, if, stop calling him Rabbit, <laughs> you disrespectful, you're not Thor, stop disrespecting Rocket. But if Rocket sees, like, the Wakandan guns, I'm pretty sure he's going to want a Wakandan gun, like, immediately. I mean, he, he also wanted it. his arm. That, he did want his arm. That was where that, he's at least I don't it. remember seeing, maybe Adrian was saying, see, of them actually breaking out all the big guns from Wakanda. I don't know if it's because they were still recovering from, I guess, actual Black Panther movie, yeah. but it didn't Well, seem- I mean, the, not, like, they didn't have, like, any anything big. I mean, I guess, like, all their ships kind of got blown up in the Black Panther movie for the most part, but the warriors do have, like, the spear thing. Well, I know that, that but they don't have, like, the actual, looked like, I thought they had all the battle guns. Mm-mm. Where are my battle no. rhinos? They can't be True. sacrificed. Well, no. True. It's because they kicked Wakabi out and put M'Baku in. And so we got the Jabari. Yeah. Um, yeah, my boy M'Baku. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, up. like, that. So, because they're, they're there so that Shuri can save Vision or, like, attempt to save Vision. Um, so, like, Scarlet, which isn't on the field at all. And, like, when they, like, let the. It was really, like like you said, like a big-scale battle where they let the Dome of Wakanda, like, open, like, slightly for them to, like, come inside. And Cap and Black Panther are running, like, full force, and they're the only two keeping up with each other. And Cap lands that first punch, and then Black Panther, and it's like, oh, my God. It's so good. I know I know people, like, have seen that, like, Cap wins the first punch, but Black Panther, like... They both landed, like, right next to each other. <laughs> T'Challa definitely ju- is the first to jump in. Like, T'Challa's the first one to jump. Yeah, no. T'Challa jumps yeah. in first. Cap runs past him. Now T'Challa jumps into the like it's like the middle of the pack before Cap does. 
I didn't know this was a thing. I know, I know it's like a small <laughs> detail, but I've just seen it on Twitter so much that like Cap throws the first punch at Wakanda. He, I'm like, not using it really... in a negative like context at all. No, I don't. No, I know, I know, but I'm just saying okay. in general, like on Twitter, I keep I keep seeing it. People saying like, "Oh, uh, Cap's out there being a soldier and running in there past uh, T'Challa." Like, no, they ran at the same speed and kind of got there at basically the same time. No, basically, Cap, Cap, Cap runs a little bit faster. I don't know. All I know is T'Challa gives a speech of, like, we have no choice. His Lord of the Rings speech, because this literally looks like it could totally be from the last scene. That's why it's awesome. And basically they both take off running. And I don't care who gets there first. All I know is both of them are way ahead of everybody else. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Banner's just slipping and falling. Who actually face plus. Hulkbuster. Yeah, which is kind of cute. Banner's just adorable. But no, I forgot how much I liked open scene battles. I guess I haven't seen one of those in a while. Especially at least one that's actually well done. Yeah. Um, I think, too, like, one of the other things that happens once um, they start getting overwhelmed and scr- they bring out, like, this big, like, dirt digger thing. Like, there's all these, like, different, like, turning, like, knivey thingies. Um, that's not the technical term. <laughs> But it's like a big roller with like pointy stuff. Um, and it was actually really cool because Proxima Midnight, when she comes through, she comes through with it. Um, and before Wanda shows up to like take it out, you actually you get Okoye and Black Widow fighting together. And it's everything I wanted. And I want an A-Force movie because it was so badass. Like they don't really talk to each other, but like how like cohesive they are as a team fighting together is so good and then fighting with yeah. Proxima like it's just it's awesome it's super dope and it kind of puts like all like that conversation of like what happened after Black Panther people saying that like Okoye and would kick the shit out of Black Widow and would destroy Wonder Woman like like would she really like they're just they're off they're on the same team fighting yeah, for see, the same and, for the same so thing so if I'm they not- head nodded to each other like they were there to fight that horn chick. And I'm pretty sure the horn chick kicked both their ass. They, she does end up yeah, knocking she was them about, out at the end. But yeah, it's she really was about cool. to beat them both. Yeah, <laughs> she, she was about to beat them, um, but it was still really cool to watch them. And then you have um, Scarlet Witch coming down and just wrecking shop. Like, that is the Scarlet Witch that I know and love and I'm finally happy to see on the big screen. <laughs> Like that, which leads to as we kind of talked about, like the OP characters are finally showing that they're actually OP. Yeah, you see a full Thor, you see a full Scarlet Witch, you even see a full Doctor Strange. Can we talk about Thor using the power of the Bifrost to just like come in now? It wasn't to immigrant song, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but Stormbreaker has the power of the Bifrost, and he like it looks like it, they do like kind of like this. In the vein of Lord of the Rings, this, oh my god, we're losing, guys. How can we do this? Close-ups of Cap and being bloodied and everything. And then all of a sudden you just see, like, the giant Bifrost hit. He comes down with Rabbit and Tree, and he just, like, lights everybody up. Literally. (laughs) And it's so good. Very good, very good. And then the, uh... I am Groot. I, I am Steve, Steve Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Captain America, but that one got me, man. Like that was barely like in character for for Captain America to meet this tree thing, who he's never seen before, and that's his response. I'm I'm about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, it was ad libbed the the line between him and Thor, where Thor is or uh, where he's like, "You got my hair," and he's like, "And you copied my beard." <laughs> That was yeah, that was so apparently that. that was the first time that they had been on set together, and uh, they realized that they had that, and so they just said it and they kept it in the movie. So I like it. Yeah. So anyway, Scarlet Witch fucked up by going down to protect everybody, and she has to go back, uh, and they end up getting Vision. Vision has to escape, and then um, so essentially, kind of miss this. But the whole thing is that Scarlet Witch is the only person, because her powers are derived from the Tesseract, that can, like, destroy the Mind Stone that is in Vision's forehead. They were there so that Shuri could detach it and then she could destroy it separately. That plan failed when they ended up storming, um, one of the children of Thanos ends up storming the thing and, um... Vision ends up leaving with him. Vision's about to die. Steve saves him. And then they all come up. 
And then all of a sudden, Thanos. And Thanos backhands everybody <laughs> trying to get to Vision. Um, and then you get that really cool cap scene where he's holding Thanos and Thanos looks a little bit surprised, but then he just ends up backhanding him too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then when he comes up, you have what I think really showcases Scarlet Witch's power is as she's starting to destroy the stone in Vision's head while he's saying he loves her and it's so heartwarming, she holds Thanos back like effectively and she's exerting power like in two different ways destroys the stone you think it's one and then thanos is just like no and then he just dr strange is it winds it back and takes the mind stone and it was all for nothing and she has to watch vision die twice which might come to one of the most messed up part of the movies of she not only killed her love then she got to watch him get killed snatch the forehead straight off my guy yeah. just like yeah. You were nothing. Yeah. You just picked Give me it that. up. Just picked it up. Um, which that hurt, because they're probably one of my favorite comic book couples. Um, and then you have Thor come in with his Stormbreaker. Just plow that into Thanos' chest. And it was like a good moment in the theater, and you could feel it. And then you just have Thanos utter, you should have aimed for the head. And he snaps. And half the universe dies. Holy shit, they did the snap. I know you were expecting it, Matt. But still, this is really ballsy. I didn't think they were actually going to do the snap. So, yeah. Oh, and to add on, then Scarlet Witch dies. Yeah, Scarlet Witch dies. Black Panther dies. Um, oh, he dies messed up. Oh, yeah. Okoya oh, man. Is like, I didn't see that one coming it was hard. at all. Because he's trying to pick up Okoye, right? Yes. And then she's just like, my king. My king. Ugh. Out. Gonzo. Yeah. Uh, Sam dies. Groot, uh, Rocket has to watch Groot die again. 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 Yeah. Stop. Leave Rocket alone. God damn it. That was the one where I was like one of the most, I, I was like in my seat visibly angry. I was like, <laughs> not Groot. Not again. Stop. Groot Stop trying to rack Groot, up the God death. damn it. Makes me so sad. He's, he's almost up there with Loki. He's getting up there, racking him up. Um, then you also have uh, who else? Sam. That's also really sad because you just have uh, Rhodey, you know, be like, Sam, Sam, where are you? And I was like, oh my God. Because um, the Russo brothers actually said that they shot a scene where it shows um, Sam and Rhodey bonding because they're two, like, they're two black airmen. They have, they have this background, you know, in, in the Air Force and all this stuff, but they, it, they couldn't fit it into the movie. I did, they can't fit in there, but it does seem like they do bond. Yes. They seem, yeah, really, really yeah. Really it's at, especially when yeah, they're in the air. It, takes it shows away that they're at least, like, they definitely they're know, working yeah. together, yes, like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like they were doing their own thing while everybody else was on the ground. Yes. Um, who else? All the other Guardians of the Galaxy die. All of the Guardians except for Rocket is dead. Mantis, Drax, and Star Lord all die. Um, Bucky's dead. Cap had to like. I want to see this aftermath because both Sam and Bucky are dead, and Cap is just there. And you watch Bucky die again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the saddest and what really re oh Strange is dead as well. What really ripped my heart out is Peter dying in Tony's arms. Just saying, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. I'm just saying, I don't want to go, sir. And he calls him sir. And I'm like, this is Tony Stark's baby. This is his child. This is his surrogate son. This is messed up. Why are you putting Tony through so much pain? And I'm gonna cry again because it was so sad. Yeah, we start this movie with him, you know, trying to convince Pepper to have a son because of like the movie, and then we end it with him with Peter in his arms. Like, how messed up is that? Yeah. Not fun. And that's like the only one that caught me in the back of the throat. I was like, oh, uh, Tom Holland, you bastard! You're a good actor, man. He acted You're such so a good actor. Well. So I already knew this was going to happen. So it was what it was. <laughs> it was what it was. I'm sorry, Matt. I feel so bad for God, you. All the way buddy. down to they literally said that he died in his arms and everything. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, that's how I felt in Last Jedi, buddy. I, I feel you. I feel you. We're just going to stay off the internet like the week of a, like the night before a movie comes out. 
But yeah, so that's and that's how it ends, and it makes me extremely sad. And the aftermath, like, of this is it's going to be immense to deal with in Avengers Four. And you end the movie with Thanos sitting on a fucking farm. Yeah, my boy, my man, my boy, just doing exactly what he said he was going to do. My man, just. Yeah. Chilling. So now we're going to talk about the talk actual about, star of this yeah, movie. Thanos. Avengers, Thanos bitch slaps everybody. Yeah. Part one. <laughs> Accurate. No, Thanos is the best Marvel villain, probably the best comic book villain that I've ever seen on screen. Um, and that's a testament to Joss Brolin's acting and the Russos for not. So like what happens a lot, what I, I've been thinking about with CG is like they treat the CGI actors or people like they're this otherworldly thing it doesn't matter but if you notice like in all of andy circus's roles and then specifically in josh brolin's role where he's like he is treated like another character he's given depth and emotion and like he acts the crap out of it um and i just realized um which i probably should realize in the movie is he totally didn't have to let tony live after uh strange gave him the stone but he did yeah, yes. yeah, no, like he he's like a maniac, and like is he? he's definite. I mean, yeah, Matt, he's mainly a yes, be, because like he can make everything like a utopia if he really, really wanted to. But instead, he decides to go with like the genocide part. But like he's an honest dude. Like he could kill everybody if he wants, and he doesn't. He just smacks people around. Like he could literally just. Incinerate, disintegrate all of the Avengers when they are like fighting him and in Wakanda, but he does it because that's not what his goal is. So he's like true to his goal, and I I gotta commend him for that. Which Matt, do you want to go into his goal? No, oh, do you want me to tell it or you tell it? You go for it, Matt. I've, when I'm watching, I'm like, this is Matt. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the- and I'm not even joking when I say that. Like I'm watching it, like I'm listening to him say his plan. I'm like, holy, this is Matt right now. Like, so his whole with goal. People. And Logic Thing wants to collect all of these stones to then erase half of the world, or not the world, the universe population, basically due to overpopulation, so that basically you don't extinguish all the resources and life can then restore. And he obviously has to make sacrifices by killing his own daughter. And then he makes choices on whether to kill people who basically resist him, which is why I fully believe Valkyrie's dead. No! <laughs> And also, as Adrian said, of if he knows he has what he wants, his whole and whole of not just being cruel, but just following his plan of he lets Peter live a few times. He actually lets Drax and Mantis live a few times. He lets all the Avengers live. And then on Titan, he lets everybody live and leaves. He had. Yeah, does he outwardly kill anybody other than Gamora? Mm, nope. No. <laughs> yeah, and he fights literally all of the Avengers. He only has killed Gamora because he had to for the And stone. Loki, I guess. Oh, yeah, Loki. As, oh, yeah, as Loki, Loki trying Loki to, try to stab him, him in the throat. throat. Yeah. <laughs> There's no nonsense of he literally, like I said, does not kill anybody except basically. And the only reason he basically kills Gamora is because he realizes he has to. Because he realizes she's the only thing in the universe that he loves. And that's the only way he was able to get the stone. So he does not go out of his way to kill anybody unless he's had to and has one goal and one mission. And as he talks about on Titan of his basically his planet was running due to overpopulation, loss of resources. And he comes up with a great plan of we need to case we kill half the population and we're not going to go basically genocide style. We're not going to go any messed up style or even if I want to say killmonger style of we're going to kill randomly. Basically, whether whoever you are, whether you're rich, poor, disabled, or any type of ethnicity or anything, basically you will flip a coin whether you live or die, and it's fair to all everybody, and it's completely balanced. And they they show this on um, on Gamora's home planet because he says, or his his people say, step onto a line or cross the line, and it's it's his guards holding back two waves. And then I don't know how it's decided, but then only one half gets shot. But they you don't know what wave is what. They don't know where it is. They just tell them to separate themselves. Yep. And just one side get ends up getting killed. Which um, leads to my favorite scene of this entire movie, which I don't know if you saw me look at you. 
but basically I flipped in this entire movie, of his balanced speech with Baby Gamora. Which, I love that scene, and I love that speech, and I probably shouldn't relate it to it more than I should have. <laughs> but that entire speech of balance and everything else, I was like, I really like this. Like you have too much to one side, and it falls... Especially in today's age of everybody into the extreme version and polarization version of just exact balance. Yeah. And everything he did was on one mission and completely yeah. fair. Which which is like, and I don't think it was fair. I mean, like, it was it was random. But I don't think... Which killing, randomness I, is about I, as fair as you're going to get. I know, I just don't think killing <laughs> half half of the universe is fair in any way. But I will say this, like, when it comes to, like, motives and stuff, um, he has no power at the center of it. Like, everybody else, with, I guess, the exception of, like, Zemo and Vulture, it's all about power. power. Um, and for him, in the comic books, in, in Infinity Gauntlet, his big thing is that he is attempting to get all the power from the Infinity Stones and kill all this stuff to impress death. Um, and pretty much, like, he's in love with Death. And Death is a character that he pretty much just wants to, like, marry and, like, be a part of. And he wants her so bad. This is why he does it. And he does it for that power. And I make the stance right now that Thanos in the MCU is better than any comic book adaptation of Thanos. And it has to do with the fact that they made a giant purple cgi guy one of the most relatable villains in the history if you don't think this actual discussion is going to happen in about 50 to 100 years you're insane yeah i just don't think in a finite universe with no matter how much you go there is a limited number of resources whether you can even extinguish you can bring back all the trees to make new wood all the times in the world but then you're going to need more houses for more people eventually you will run out of space yeah, and then eventually, like, you'll keep running out of resources because populations, like, either way, this is a maintenance thing. You're going to have to keep coming in and killing people. Literally what he was doing was in. basically the circle of life to me. Because if you look at the planet's histories and everything else, we have mass extinctions and the Earth just recycles. Yeah. This is what happens. Yeah. And we kind of do it, like, with population control with animals already. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we, we already do that as, like, a human race yeah. with other species. So... He's not a mad all th- that wrong. He's wrong. Like he's the villain. I don't like, think that's he's actually why wrong. He's the villain. I honestly don't. And our he- <laughs> and our heroes are like, well, he's wrong because he just make everything right. Like he has the power to literally make everything right in the world, yeah. and he like, does. He, but the problem I see like, is he's not restrained by any reality. He's not restrained by any time. He's not restrained by anything. Like the Infinity Gauntlet gives him the so, power to do anything. But what if we make everybody immortal then? So there is no death anymore. What happens then? I wasn't saying make them all immortal. I'm just saying make it so that you can make make the resources. Well, I mean, if you're saying you can make everybody's lives better, why do you have to die then? Yeah, you can make that reality. So, but I mean, eventually. But I mean, if nobody dies and then burst to die. Like I said, this whole thing is basically a cosmic of basically a cosmic version of the circle of life. This happens one way or another. Our planet will eventually die. But he can eliminate the circle of life with Infinity Gauntlet. He can literally do whatever. I get that, and I understand that, but I just don't see what you could possibly do where you eventually don't have a problem. Well, that's why you don't deserve an Infinity Gauntlet, Matt. Exactly. I mean, that's fine. Because I don't don't know either. I I, I just think think every outcome has maintenance because, essentially, Thanos is going to keep this gauntlet. He he kills half the population of the universe. That population is going to get back up. Yeah, it may take longer than if he, like, regrew all the trees and added more land or made an entirely new planet for people to go to. Like... But it's still something that requires maintenance. Like, solving this, like, degradation, de- degradation of society and everything requires maintenance in certain steps at any time. Which is why you have, like, you mentioned, like, animals aging. That's why there's not just one deer hunting season. Like, it keeps coming up whenever they need to control the population of that animal. And so, like, even that, like, that is also... An, uh, that's also an outcome that is going to take maintenance as well. 
I just don't think eventually you're going to have to, people are going to have to die. Natural life cycle. Don't make them immortal. Just like well, I know, give, but their, eventually, give them the resources that they need. That's well, it. Well, let's say you advance all the technology. You're going to get to the point where it's going to eventually be lack of space. Even, like I said, you can give everybody the most resources anyways, even though you are definitely, I guess, with bending your reality, you can do whatever. Yeah. I still go with the, you know, if you use, like, the laws of physics. But that doesn't and, matter. He turned Drax into little little, little spirally things. <laughs> <laughs> like it, none of that, none of that matters. Physics does not matter. I know. I just don't. I just didn't think, as a Doctor Strange way of long term game, there is no way without sustainability of killing pe- that you're not going to have to get rid of people. I just think long term way there is no solve. Long, I know, like, but eventually you will way, have to kill no people. Solve. Eventually, like something will end up killing people. Like the the planet ran itself into the ground because they killed it. Like that's what happened on his planet. And so essentially, he's just prolonging the inevitable. Like ultimately, like none of this is a solve. None of this is a solve. It is it, it is eventually going to have to lead with planets killing their own people because there's nothing there. It's just how long it takes to get to that point. Or so in you the restart other part, life by thousands of years, depending on the planet, if not even more than thousands of years by doing this. But it's the same thing if he creates infinite resources. No, if you create infinite resources, you're going to have more population growth will catch up faster with more resources. And then you just make more resources because it's the damn infinity gauntlet. Where are all this stuff going? It's the infinity gauntlet. Perfect societies. Don't even got to upkeep them. I just don't know where all this stuff's going to go. Either way, none of it's solvable. Infinity Gauntlet. Ben's reality. Ben's time. Ben's space. Anything. You just make a giant, use a space stone, make a giant hole in the center of it, and you just throw all your trash in there. It just goes to nowhere. Literally We've been to nowhere. Place, I was like, literally the place nowhere that is now up in flames where the collector lived. Yeah. No, I just think ultimately, like, it is a cycle that is unstoppable. And I think thinking you can stop that cycle, even like by prolonging it that way, like you're still not doing that in the long run because all those people are still going to die. You are still losing people and you still have planet death. It's just prolonged. And I just, I don't know. I think that Thanos was ridiculed and then he had the power to do it. And so he did it. But I think ultimately, like, I don't know. It's, it's really weird to have a villain that keeps their word. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I did not expect them to. So the way I really thought this movie was going to happen was that like he was going to get all the stones and it was going to like he was going to get like most of the stones like with like maybe like one or two. And then they're going to save like the rest of it for Avengers four. And one of our main heroes was going to die. But no, they let Thanos come in, shop and smack people up. So what I thought was going to happen didn't happen, but what I wanted Thanos to do in this movie did happen. I wanted him to come and just smack people around. Um, I want him to go and just, like, pimp slap Black Panther after his movie just came out, like, two months ago. And it all happened. So I like Thanos. I think he's a little crazy, but I can see his point of view. Um, I can see his point of view, and I think that's a great job by the Russos of giving us a different character than what we got in the comics like kate was saying so i think it's a i think he's, he's well done like you see emotion he has a wide range of emotion he's not very one note so i'm about it i'm happy with it okay um so i guess from the movie is that a wrap-up are we done with thanos i guess we to one other question that i want to know because i did think about this at least i did at the end do you have a problem with who they killed off Mm-mm. Mm. um or a no, quote unquote be- killed off. No, because Tony, Black Widow. I guess I'm a little upset that uh, Tom Holland died, but like his scene is like one of my favorite parts of the movie, so I'm not too mad. Because I mean, like, I'm not dumb. I know they're gonna fix this eventually. Like, that's just how stuff works. I guess the more thing was. I don't know if you guys noticed, but one of the first things I did notice when the people were dying is everybody with sequels all died. Well, I thought they just, like, went to do with, like, the original Avengers. So, like, the original Avengers can be the one that kind of, like, take down 
Thanos yeah. for, like, for the most part. So like just because like all all I was thinking was like Tony's line in the first Avengers movie of like if we can't save Earth, you know, you'd be damn sure we're gonna avenge it. Right, right. Yeah. And that's like those are like the OG guys. So that's what I was thinking like when it was going through. I don't care about like the contract stuff or any of that stuff because I know everyone's gonna come back eventually. Like they're not gonna let everyone just be dead. It just doesn't make any sense. But I just don't know how they're gonna go about Avengers four with everybody dead. So like, I don't know how they're gonna rectify it. I know they're going to. I just don't know how they're going to. Yeah. So like I was at first because I had heard a lot of and Matt included. I had, I had heard people talk about like oh well there were no stakes because they're all coming back. At first, like, oh, crap, that does make sense. We should have got it one, like, a good yet death. I don't think Loki's coming back. I don't think he should. Do- Loki's died. So See, that's the only thing the as we go is I thought everybody, at least my belief was, everybody before uh, Soul Stone activated or Snap is permadeath. Okay. That was at least my belief. Yeah. So, like, I hope he stays dead. Um, but ultimately, like, the way, like, I started thinking is if we had lost one of the main people in this movie... Like, we don't get a lot of time with all of them. We don't get a lot of time with the people that we started this journey with. And so to lose them in a movie where we don't have a lot of, like, extra back... Not, like, not extra background, but, like, more exploratory and, like, importance to them. Like, I think every character in this movie was important. I don't think there's... There's not a single piece of this you can cut out. But I do think that having... Like, Tony and Cap didn't meet each other again. Like... I want to see that. And so, like, for me, I see them getting rid of these people making Avengers 4, like Adrian said, with the original ones fighting Thanos and then having a permanent death and having deaths that mean it happening in 4. Like, the stakes are really high for 4 now. Now that I think about that and you say that, how are they getting off Titan? Oh, Nebula's there. Is she? Yeah, Nebula, Nebula crashed his ship into, okay. into Thanos, okay, okay. so I'm sure they're just going to okay. use that's, that. That's, that's, I, I that's how she, yeah, that's how she finds out, or that's how they find out that Gamora's dead. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I couldn't, I didn't remember that part. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, she crashes her ship into Thanos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that dude just takes a beating. It does not go down. Nope. Yeah, so, like, for me, I see it as a way, like, I know some people are like, there were no stakes, there were no this, how, you know, the deaths were cheapened, and my emotion was cheapened because of that, um, but no, I think it's fine knowing that these people are gonna come back, because I think for me, it makes me even, it makes me scared going into four, because hopefully they won't do this, like, this again, where they kill people and bring them back, but then again, it's comics, and everybody comes back in the comics, which is another thing I have in my head, but, like, most important, like, they're gonna give on-screen deaths to the characters we've been on this ride with for so long and have them be extremely powerful. So, Which leads to, I guess, my one other thing before that. I don't know if, Adrian, if you have any other quick thoughts on that at all for stakes? Um, no, not really. I mean, I'm sure the stakes are going to be high in the next one. So the thing I want to see is what I'm in a more interesting is you were talking about like as far as like, moving on to part two. Is I want to know is... Probably the most interesting question to come up is not whether Tony lives or dies, but whether Tony gets to have a family or basically can never let go of anything and ends up in a situation probably worse than death. That hurts so much. Don't say that, Matt. No. Like, he's, I think he's definitely going to be like the Luke Skywalker of like this universe where just bad stuff is going to happen to him all the time and he's never going to get a happy ending and he's just going to like end up sacrificing himself to save everybody just like he did in Avengers 1. And he's never, yeah, he's never, he's never going to get that kid. I think uh, they're going to let Cap be happy. I'm pretty sure Cap's going to be happy Like at the end of all this. I'm pretty sure they're going to kill Tony. I think Tony's done in, in Avengers 4 for sure. Yeah. I, like, to that point, what I'm most interested in in seeing Avenger, in Avengers 4 is how all of these people who lost people so close to them deal with that grief. Um, I know they can't do it for a long time because it's a movie, but just seeing that that aftermath um, is what I really want to know, and I think it's going to have to do with like him. I think Adrian's right, uh, or right about Tony. I think they're also going to kill Cap, but I think he's right that I think Tony's going to have to finally face the fact that he's not going to get married to Pepper, and he's not going to have a baby, and that's just how it is. I, I definitely see Tony sacrificing himself to bring Peter back. We don't even know Pepper's alive. No. No, she is. How? Oh, yeah, we don't know if Pepper's alive. We don't know if anybody's alive. Yeah. We don't know who's alive. 
We There's know. a lot of characters I can tell you we only know. For all we know, Valkyrie is completely dead, and if they're not, they got her on the second go. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. We don't know if Happy's alive. Yeah. We do know that uh, Fury is dead, as is Maria Hill. They couldn't let him say motherfucker yeah. on screen? Yeah, he was close. He almost got it. They almost <laughs> let him do it. They should have let him do it, man. It's the end of the movie. Like, what are you going to lose? Like, we were already here for two hours. Like, by this point, we expect it. Yeah. And if kids don't expect it, y'all go watch some Samuel Jackson movies. <laughs> I also think, too, like, so this actually made me kind of, um, people didn't like the post credit scene. I liked it a lot because the next movies we get are Ant-Man and the Wasp and then Captain Marvel. And the post credit scene, it ends with Maria and um, Fury um, disintegrating. But before that happens, Fury calls somebody on the pager and then drops the pager. And it is Captain Marvel, it turns out to be, um, which I'm excited for. Yeah, the only way I don't like it is if it took like him... Because it was like a fancy-looking pager, right? So, like, unless, like, he's paging her, like, in the 90s somehow. And, like, the events of Captain Marvel, like, undo the events of this movie. Like, I don't... Like, I, that was, like, the theory that I was seeing, like, on Reddit. But that's the only way I don't like that situation happening. I think the problem is you went just, to Reddit. Yeah. I mean, like, because for me, like, that just... Can, you, can, you, can we talk about the articles y'all been sharing in our <laughs> chat for, like, the last two days? Like... Getting a lot better stuff on Reddit than I am in comic book, whatever, in The New Yorker for theories. <laughs> Those I mean, are amazing and I mean, treasures. I mean, like, ultimately, like, the, like, that, like, it kind of looks like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tech, like, but it, it looks old. It doesn't look like new tech. It looks like a, like, a glorified pager, like, a better pager, but, like, something that they totally could have had in the 90s. Because, like, I'm assuming that because Captain Marvel's part Kree that we're going to have this, the Kree arc going into the scroll arc into Avengers 4 and then setting up the next wave with a uh, secret invasion for the next phases. But. Yeah, that's what I hope for. But, you know, if this movie is like a tale of anything, like, who's doing Avengers 4? Do we know? Is it the Russos? I believe so. Are they finishing so. it out? Yeah. Yeah. If this is like any indication, like the Russos are going to give us, you know, the best of both worlds. Yeah. Unlike other properties. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap this up. Okay, um, now that we're at two hours, uh, was there anything else that anybody had that they wanted to say but haven't about this movie? Um, are you, like... No. I mean, like, negative-wise? Or, or uh, yeah, so I guess... Ba- oh, yeah. Favorite part? Uh, I don't know what my favorite part is. Everything. I really can't pick a favorite part to be honest. Like off the top of my head, I can't. I can't think of like a moment in the movie because everything's just like one long action ride of two and a half hours. Like I don't know. It's all one big scene to be in my head. Matt, I already said this. Dano's speech to Baby Gamora on balance. Yeah. Um, Gamora and Thanos, like that entire arc. Uh, okay, critiques. Any negatives on Avengers: Infinity War? Uh, some of the CGI is not that great, and I only the only reason I bring it up is because we have two and a half hours of like just like near perfect CGI with Thanos, and then some of like the background stuff just feels like they were running out of time or like running out of money or whatever. So we have like uh, some of the stuff with Rhodes and Banner and the Hulkbuster are kind of distracting. Like it's very very minor, but if we have to talk about negatives, I think it's worth mentioning that some of that CGI is not that great. When you have things like Thanos being just absolutely amazing, you leave Banner's tiny head poking at a Hulkbuster armor alone. He's it's bad on your second watch. Like when like Cap is there, like 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 oh god! Like look at look at Banner in the background. Look how bad his head hanging so looks. Cute. It doesn't look good. Okay, <laughs> Matt. Um, go to you first. I don't actually think there's anything that I would change about this movie except for make it an hour longer and give me more background on, like, Scarlet Witch and Vision and more Cap stuff. But, like, that's putting another hour on it. So, like, if you're not going to put another hour on it, this movie's fine how it is. I don't know, honestly, because it was very well put together. I mean... There wasn't really anything that really stuck out or stuck out to me. I mean, I don't think it's like the most perfect film I ever saw, but 
<clears throat> some of the stuff, like the death-wise and everything, I guess it was just hard for me to feel some way. Or I didn't have the emotional take for a lot of that stuff. Especially considering I knew what was going to happen on a lot of it. I don't really... I'm not a big critic of the CGI. I don't... Because it's like pizza. Put it this way, it wasn't bad CGI. It wasn't something that's super noticeable that was bad. Hmm. Okay, so yeah. rate it. So you want me to rate it? Rate it, yeah. Um. Rate it, and then where you have it in your Marvel rankings. <laughs> <clears throat> um, as far as rating it... I give it a nine point five. I enjoyed it. Nice, Adrian. Oh, I'm at a ten out of ten. Um, this is my favorite Marvel movie. It's my favorite comic book movie, to be honest. Uh, just because it's like in the culmination. I, I don't even care. Like, if you want to take it as like as a movie itself, with you know the you know the film student critique of like how it's put together. Like, that's besides the point because this is a an you know a bookend part of eighteen years and ten year eighteen movies and ten years of my life so it all came together how I wanted it to come together and it surprised me in other places so it's you know like I said it's the most fun I've had in a movie since the Force Awakens and before that the only thing I can think of that gave me this kind of excitement was Avengers so I think it's definitely my favorite at the moment ten ten Thanos slap in Avengers out of ten. <laughs> Um, I am at a solid 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 moons being thrown on this movie. It is my favorite Marvel movie. It is definitely number one now. Um, I don't think it's my favorite comic book movie because I think Logan is better. But, like, that's also something I usually, I don't think any, like, comic book movie can go against. But this is definitely better than anything that I've seen put out. Um, of a comic book movie other than Logan. so I'll definitely say it's probably my favorite comic book movie, per se. Obviously excluding... I just don't think Logan's a really a weird yeah, type that's of... Re- Lo- yeah, Logan's just like on another level, I think, of yeah. just genre. Like a Except, genre I gave genre it a film. 9.5 with nothing, but I guess it's just hard for me to... Obviously, I liked it, I really liked it and enjoyed it in 10 out of 10, but I think it just literally... I had two days of like shit of like this whole movie basically being ruined for me. That I pretty much yeah. went numb into the movie of like this. We'll see what happens, yeah. and then as they each popped up from like basically within the first five minutes of this movie, I already knew basically something. And then first ten minutes, oh, well, that's that. You looked at me like those first two times, and I like told you to shut up because I was like, no. Yeah. So basically, within the, like the first thirty minutes, I basically anything that was supposedly shocking, I already knew all the way down to Stan Lee being a bus driver. Yeah. So don't be a dick. And invade people's Twitch channels and discords. So it was one of those, like, I don't want to say it wasn't a 10 out of 10, but it was just like I left going, like, I really like this and I'm excited for part two. But I just felt this weird, like, numb stage of, like, I knew what was going to happen. And as a person who doesn't, I'm not a big fan of rewatching movies over and over because I feel like once I learned it or know, I got it. Like, it just ruined because, like, I do for the one adventure and then we're good. I don't need to do the same adventure 10 times. So already having it pretty yeah. much done and solidified, I was like, oh, well, okay. Um, this is the movie, I'm just going to say it, because this is the movie that I wanted The Last Jedi to be in terms of, like, people failing, in terms of, like, me caring about characters' deaths or, like, near deaths. Um, I wish I would have felt like this at Walking Out of The Force Awakens, because it's basically, like, more or less the same you film. It's like a movie last... about failure and, you like, mean the, last I mean, uh, the Last Jedi. Yeah, like, this is, like, how I wanted to feel coming out of The Last Jedi, of, like, the the stakes of failure and kind of, like, the impending doom feeling and me caring about these characters. Um, I wish I would have felt like this coming out of The Last Jedi, but I didn't because I think this movie does the things that The Last Jedi wants to get across a lot better, in my opinion. No, um, uh, yeah, as far as, like, big-time release movies, definitely up there compared to the last few <laughs> And as far as we've gone from The Last Jedi, I have no care whatsoever about any of those characters. They could all get blown in the space alien style, and I'm not going to care. Because I've left with zero feels. Um, I'm just not going to compare it to anything, and just say that it's really, really great. And Gamora isn't weak, and I really hate that people are saying that about her. 
And, uh, yeah, keep your hot takes to yourself. This movie's phenomenal. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as always, you can find us, or remember to rate, review, and subscribe our podcast. Uh, subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. You can find us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash butwhythepc, where we are streaming a whole bunch of different things. Um, we're affiliate now. We do have a sub button with a cool little spicy emote that was just approved. And you can find me at OhMyMythRandier on Twitter. Adrian? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at SuperReese93, S-U-P-E-R-R-U-I-Z, 93. Matt? You can find me on Thanos Farm chilling with him. We're going to be doing some crops, make some great food, make some butter, having some biscuits. Actually, the hell with the rest of y'all. I want to see Thanos make butter. <laughs> he would make amazing butter. I want that movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're done.